And welcome back to Stan Sheriff Center. It's time now to take a look at the Kaiser Permanente keys to the match, Chris. And for Cal State Fullerton, they've got to beat David. Oh, yeah, that's the David and Goliath. This is the bottom of the Big West versus the top of the Big West. A classic David versus Goliath battle. This underdog needs to play perfectly to succeed. And for Hawaii, efficiency is the key. And I agree with what Dave showed you said earlier in the pregame show. I think Hawaii's got to do some tinkering as well. Well, we'll see if Hawaii does that as going back to serve for the Titans is Katie Rue, a five foot eight senior out of Trabuco Canyon, California. And we're underway from the Sheriff Center, set right side off the double block, dug up by Francis. They'll go over on the left side, the roll shot kept alive by Castillo. They go pipe for Granado, dug up by Francis, set left side off the double block, saved by Yosia. Bumped up out of the back row. Granado off the hands of Francis. It flies out of bounds, and Hawaii picks up the first point of set number one. And the Hawaii Tell FCU starting lineups will be scrolling on the bottom of your screen. So Hawaii up 1-0 here in set number one. UH comes in 14-6 on the year. 8-1 in Big West Conference play. A half game behind Cal Poly as that serve goes into the net. On the other hand, you have the Titans four and 17 and winless in Big West play at 0 and 8. A program that in 2015, Chris did not win a match. They went 0 and 28. Yeah, they and really, last year won six and this year only four. Yeah, they really struggled uh, that, that first year. I think that uh, their coach, Ashley Preston, has got them going in the right direction. Now watch for them to improve over the next couple of years. Schneider dug up the step out down the line as money for Megs. You know, the last two weeks, she's been the Big West Conference de uh, Defensive Player of the Week. She may be the Offensive Player of the Week this week. I agree. She put up some great numbers last night, for sure. Keep in mind, Hawaii had 17 aces in the first meeting. Castillo serves that one off the tape. It will be ace number one, right on cue. How was that, Chris? You didn't jinx her. You actually gave her some good luck there, Scotty. That might be the first time ever <laughs> that the Robs Bocce did not come into play for Castillo. <laughs> Service ace number 12 on the year. Hawaii out in front, 3-1. Castillo again from the right side. Jump floats that one on a line drive. Francis up to Bowman on the left side. The roll shot dug up by Hawaii in the middle. Rolled over, dug up by the Titans. The backs at the right side. The step out down the line will be good. The kill for Summer Karens. Karens a junior out of Laguna Niguel, California. And Hawaii will make a substitution now. Castillo will leave. And Coming in would be McKenna Ross into the back row, who's become a true utility player, if you will, for this team. Yeah, she has been good. How about Karis? Good swing on the outside there. Her dad, Mark, three-time All-American at Cal State Long Beach. Yeah. Good bloodlines. That one block comes back over, saved by Cal State Fullerton. Bumped up. Who's going to take it? Nobody. That is the essence of campfire defense, Coach. Yeah, I'd say that's uh, the ultimate in lack of communication. So you get a big kill. Always oh, double up the times. 14 serving two. 4-2. Four, two. Four, four, two, four, excuse 14 me. 14-2 would be seven <laughs> times as much. Well, maybe, maybe. <laughs> we'll see. Here comes the serve. Vanasso gets it over. The set on the left side by Schneider off the double block. You'll see in the middle for Burns, diving dig. Bumped around another swing off the block. That time is good by Caitlin Nielsen. And now we'll see Tyler Fezzi coming into the front row for the Titans. She had a team high seven kills in their first meeting against UH. Nastasha Bowman serves it over, handled nicely by Hawaii in the middle for Burns off the block and out of bounds. Well, Burns has improved so much in the middle. She's, uh, she's not only hitting the one in front of the center, She's comfortable going behind the setter as well. A little tight slide and the wide slide as well. You know, Lisa Strandma brought up this point last night that maybe she should think about playing beach. What do you think about that idea? I think it would be great. I think it would really help her game a lot. Left side set, cross court by Nielsen. Here's Hawaii on the left side, and Granado will be stuffed. Granado roof, first block of the match for Cal State Fullerton. Henry in on the stuffing. 
Take a look at it again there, Chris. Naya Henry, the six-foot sophomore from Frisco, Texas, leads the team in block solos. Put up a good block there. Costello, the team leader in service aces with 21, floats that over. Two-hand pass up to Yosia in the middle, Burns puts it down with authority. Yosia gets a good pass tonight. Pretty much guarantees she's going to play around a lot with establishing the middle attack, whether it be Burns or Maglio. Do you think we'll see a more offensive Yosia like we did an uh, evening ago? You know, I don't think we will. I, I think she's going to be experimenting more with running different play sets. Bowman on the right side, and that kill put down by Fezzi. You know, I think if she has to do a dump shot on a 50-50 ball at the net, she will, but I really think she's going to try to experiment more with getting more players involved, hitting different sets and hitting from different positions on the court. Francis the libero, good serve, gets it over. You'll see in the middle, to the left, and down by Burns. And Natasha Burns off to a quick start here in the opening stanza. That's such a good sign, setting the middles, because that's going to open up the pin hitters here very shortly. Exactly. And it's all because the passing has been pretty darn good so far. Kahakai, good serve. Bowman backs it right side. Fezzi tips it over. Diving dig over pass, pushed over, and down by Fezzi. Very alert play by Tyler Fezzi that time. 6-1 freshman up from Riverside. Is she the one with the 4.6 GPA in high school? Yeah, you More mean than double your, is that what you said? More than double your GPA? Probably closer to triple. <laughs> <laughs> Out behind the three-meter line, you'll see a back to the right side, going cross court and hitting it too far is Kelch. And all of a sudden, Chris, you look at the scoreboard, and we're tied at seven. Hawaii won the opening set back at Fullerton on September 29th, 25 to eight. Well, in the, in the pregame, you notice that Dave showed you who's been around the horn a few times. A couple times. Predicted that it would be a closer match tonight, and it is just that so far. Bowman, left side of the cross court. Schneider dug up behind the end line. You'll see it over to Castillo, who kind of just rolls it over. Basically a free ball for the time. Step out off the block is good by Karens. Summer Karens, six foot one junior out of Laguna Niguel. And the Titans take the lead on a 3-0 scoring run. But this is kind of common. We've seen UH all season long. Get off the slow starts, and that serve into the twine by Fezzi. Well, they, they do like to dig themselves a hole and somehow get out of it. I don't think that comes, they don't come into every match with that as the game plan, no. but they might as well write it in as the game plan, because that is what happens, right? It's become part of their persona. Claire Marie Anderson, back to serve for UH, floats it high and deep, Francis up to Bowman, sets the left side, cross court and knocked down nicely by Schneider out of Old Eighth, Kansas. Natalie Schneider, who's got 281 points on the year. That's kills. There's the set right here. Big split in the block there. Unusual for Magdalene not to make it all the way out there, but Schneider, 281 points on the year, over 100 points over the next player. And that one cross bar put down by Castillo for Hawaii. Well, I noticed one thing. You mentioned it coming in a couple of hours before the match that Cal State Fullerton was working out on the floor. Their energy level really impressed me. I mean, for a team that only has four wins, you would have thought they had 17 wins. They they have not given up, that's for sure. Back to the right side, the step out cross court by Karens, kept alive by Anderson, freed over by Castillo. Here come the Titans once again. Bowman, left side, cross court. Schneider dug up by Kahakai, joust at the net, freed over, we'll get a double contact. Called on the double call it a lift on the Titans. Once again, in the middle of that joust is Marine Yosia, the queen of jousting. I'm telling you. Yeah, she it's seems to win. How many times she wins the joust? I was going to ask you, is that all timing? Yeah, a lot of it is. Yeah, and just getting that last push. And that serves up to the Manoa Marketplace. Right at 10, Ross will check in for Hawaii. Goes into the back row and serving for the Titans will be Summer Karen. So as you get a good look at Robin Amo Santos who takes a deep breath and exhales. Karen's 
Slaps it over, Kahakai, good pass up to Yosia. Backs it right side, Megs double block, but saved by Kahakai. They go back to Megs on the right side, off the double block, saved back row by Karens. They go for the pipe, the hit goes long off the right arm of Schneider. Well, there was a different look for Hawaii there, putting Magna on the right side instead of hitting it out of the middle. And I think that when she's playing on the right there, it really spreads out, makes it tougher for the uh, middle blocker on the other team because they've got Granado on the left and Magna on the right. They've got to cover both pins, a lot more distance to cover. Gianna Gavanasso, the senior, serves at line drive, serves. So far, Fullerton's done a pretty good job of handling the Hawaii serve, and that's a pretty good hit, again, by Schneider off of Burns. It looks like they're a lot more comfortable in that first contact is Fullerton. Brother coach Ashley Preston, we asked her about that match against Hawaii, the 17 service aces. We said, was that an anomaly? She, she giggled and said, yeah, I mean, we're not that bad. And when you are that bad, there's nothing you can really do. Tripped by Granado, kept alive somehow, freed over. Here come the Wahine once again. You'll see a back to the right side. Burns cross court off the hands and out of bounds. Burns running a couple of quick sets in front of the center. Now she goes, chooses to run the slide behind the center. She's having some pretty good luck. Three kills, no errors, and four tries, hitting 750. Big night for Natasha so far. Yeah, you'll take that every night as you'll see up to serve for Hawaii. Rips that one. Francis up the Bowman, back set right side. Not a great set, but somehow navigating inside the antenna. No, they'll say, okay, it went outside the antenna. I thought we waited for Sid Church, who's up on the pedestal, to, to make the call, and he hesitated and then said, yeah, Nielsen's attack was outside. So I think Ashley Preston, she may use the challenge card. I'm not sure. Oh, she is. So <laughs> Ashley Preston in her third season at Cal State Fullerton will challenge that call and we'll get a chance to see whether or not Sid Church was correct. You know, you're talking about GPAs. Ashley Preston graduated from Morgan State. She's the all-time leader in digs at that school. She also was awarded the top GPA of every student athlete at Morgan State when she graduated. She had the highest GPA. Pretty impressive, huh? A Las Vegas native and really fun to talk to. And she's trying to turn around this program. They brought in... I think Jim Donovan's found a good one. Yeah, I do no question. I agree. It's, it's going to take a while. We mentioned no wins two years ago. Let's see you once again, Coach. You make the call. Let's she see. may be challenging if there was a touch, right? Yeah, I think she is. It looks like. Well, that's a tough. That's a tough call right there. Does it touch Granado's hand or her forearm first, or does it touch the antenna first? Very close call. Well, I mean, Sid Church. Could have had a drink and a, a, a bag of popcorn. He was right front row for that one. And, uh, you know, if he didn't see it, oh, well, they are going to call a touch on Hawaii. Denise Hansen says, yes, there was. And so the point goes the way of the gals in orange. Seventh tie already here in this opening set. And coming in to serve, Savannah Costello. 12, serving 12, Costello out of La Sierra High School in Riverside. 21 service aces on the year. Close that one deep, Kahakai, good pass up to Yosia. Back set right side, and Kelsch will be Ruth Schneider in on the stop. Great block by Madeline Schneider. She's one who was number two in kills last year, but she shows that she's got a pretty good block as well. Play some offense and defense. There's 17 total blocks on the year. In the middle, Burns, she is blocked, covered by Hawaii. Burns will set the high left side. They'll have to be freed over by Kelsch. Here come the Titans in the middle, dug up by Ross. Two hands it up to Yosia, high left side for Kelsch. Kept alive by the Titans. They bump it up on the left side, and getting the kill off the hands of Yosia is Schneider. All right, once again, it doesn't get a big run up on it, just a step close there at the end. But gets a lot of heat and puts it right down the line. 
Titans in the midst of a 3-0 scoring run. There's Kelch who knocks that one down. That stops the mini run by Cal State Fullerton. Hawaii gets Castillo back into the front row. Only one blocker up. Attacker's gonna win that battle most of the time. There's Granado, had six service aces in the first meeting. High pass up to Bowman, back set right side, pushed off the block, dug up by Kahakai. They go back on the left side, Castillo gets it down in the back row. And Hawaii ties it up. I think that's the eighth tie of this opening set. Who would have thunk it? Renato again. Gets that one over. Bowman chases. Backs is the far right side off the double block. Kahakai right there. Back set right side. Kelsch down the line. Yes. Kelsch puts down the kill in Hawaii, the first to reach 15. This presentation of Rainbow Wahine Volleyball is sponsored by Strug and Hawaii Honda Dealers. Welcome back to the Stan Sheriff Center. Saturday night action here in Manoa, Hawaii, Cal State, Fullerton. And surprisingly so far, a tight one, Hawaii up by a point. Granada gets the serve over the set on the left side. Schneider's cross court shot goes long. Brown's asking for a touch, and I think we're going to see another challenge, Coach, and we are. Ashley Preston's going to use the green laminated card. Kind of like a kid in a candy store. This is the only place in Big West play where the challenge is used, and hey, might as well use it. Doesn't do any good if you keep it in your pocket. Exactly. I actually like using it when I've used up all my timeouts, and I need another, I need a third timeout in a game. Great time to use it then. So she's going to challenge whether or not there is a touch Ooh, right there, I think. on the block. And I think it may have gotten the fingertips of Burns, I huh? Think, I think Burns did maybe get a piece of it, that left hand. Hard to tell right there. It's so difficult to tell because of the uh, pixelation. Let's see. Does your finger bend back or not? Not really. But I thought we were right the first time, but Denise Hansen said we were wrong, so I don't know what to expect. I mean, this could be a, a fairly significant point when you look at where we're at here in this first set. If Hawaii gets the point, it's 16-14. If not, we're tied again. Anything there that would make you overrule the call? No. I, mean, I think it's a no touch. I think the ball is out. I think it will remain Hawaii's point. Just not enough overwhelming evidence to overrule the original call. Well, the good thing is here in Hawaii, we don't have to go back to New York to have them look at the instant replay. <laughs> Denise Hansen can just walk a couple of steps. There you see her look at our monitor and uh, make the call, and we'll see what she says. She will call a touch. So. If you're Ashley Preston, you're feeling pretty lucky. Two for two tonight yeah. with the uh, green card. Well, she is from Las Vegas originally. That's right. The only problem is she's only got one green card left. That's it. You're right. So tied once again. And that serve will be shanked by Castile. That's an ace. And that's a point for Cal State Fullerton. Getting the ace, Katie Francis. 16 serving 15. Francis again, this time into the net. Well, last night on Game On, we, took, we had a segment called Tunnel Talk because Coach Robin, when she's not happy with the way a team played in the first set, she takes them back to the tunnel. What do you think the chances of, our, of that happening here after this first set? You know, I don't, I don't think so. Hawaii's not playing that badly. I think Fullerton's just stepped it up a notch and is really playing well. It's not Hawaii's point. Schneider forward. goes cross court, gets it in the, the corner. No, I agree with you. Well, I, Schneider's playing well. Like she's got three kills. You know, their kill percentage at the 15-14 uh, the timeout, as we see this ball go in. Uh, Fulton was hitting 280, Hawaii hitting 296. Fulton normally hits 160. So they're playing well above their average. 
Back behind the end line goes Castillo freed, or Costello freed up for Hawaii in the middle. Megs and she crushes the coconuts. When in doubt, go to Emily Meglio. Claire Marie Anderson will check in. She'll go in the back row and serve for UH. 17 all here in this opening set. Anderson goes cross court, gets the serve over. Bowman goes far left side. Snyder off the double block and it trickles down in the back row. That ball and a touch on the block. You know, Robin Amos Santos knows that one of the three back row players has got to hit that ball. It's slowed down enough. And it's balls in the air long enough where one of the three back row players has got to get that touch ball. Schneider down the line to step out in the middle for Meglio. Yes. Meg's now beginning to heat up. Third kill for her. Of course, coming off a career high 19 kill performance an evening ago. Castile from the right side floats it over. The high pass Bowman near the three meter line. She'll set it. It's rolled over basically by Nielsen. Set high left side. Tipped over by Granado bumped around by the times, hit from behind the three meter line, but going out on the attack is Schneider. Oh, I love that swing that Madeline Schneider took just then. It's a broken play. Hawaii had their blockers off the net, and she took a good swing and just missed that sideline. Sixth lead change in this set. Sir popped over, getting to it, bumping up his Bowman. Knocked over and way out of bounds. Not much really Nielsen could do as she was out of bounds on the left side. And a 3-0 run by Hawaii has forced the Titans to call their first time out. This presentation of Rainbow Wahine Volleyball is sponsored by Bank of Hawaii and Kaiser Permanente. It's been a heck of an opening set so far. 12 ties, six lead changes. Hawaii out in front as Castillo delivers the set. The attack will be blocked by Megs and Granado. And that is only the second block by Hawaii in this opening set. Well, normally Hawaii would have about three about now, but one of the reasons Fullerton is playing so well is they're hitting 260, 100 points over their average. Their offense has really been spot on. 21 serving 18, that serve into the tape. Well, maybe this opening set will be a bit of a wake-up call for Hawaii. I guess after you beat a team so soundly like they did the first meeting, it's human nature to have a hard time to get up. Summer Karens serves it. And that one goes just long. Well, there's some good communication between Kahakai and Claire Marie Anderson that time. They're both following that ball carefully and uh, each one helping the other out. And look who's going back to serve for Hawaii, Emily Maglio. Ooh. There might be a wrinkle in the offense here in transition. Gets it over. Bowman dumps it over the left hand. Really the only play the setter had. Pass tight to the net. Saw no, no blocker was up there. Fullerton hanging on, Nastasha Bowman, the setter, there you see her go back to serve, the lefty. You'll see at the three meter line, goes high left side, Granado rolls it off the double block, kept alive. Back set, far right side, Fezzi tips it, burns, bumped up by a couple of Wahine, freed over by Granado. Francis to Bowman in the middle and miss hitting, and hitting it out of bounds is Henry. Why well, got away with one there. They really didn't have a clean swing at all during that rally. So a timeout called on the floor. Hawaii up by three. Scott Robbs, Chris McLaughlin back with you. And Chris, did you know the jack fact is the Titans are one of three Big West teams who have never beaten Hawaii. Cal State Fullerton, UC Irvine, UC Riverside combined 0-97 against UH. That's incredible, pretty, isn't it? Pretty gaudy number. You'll see a back to serve, up to Bowman. Right side off the double block, the attack by Nielsen. Kaha Kai, Kelsch two hands it over. They go on the left side. 
And off the block is good by Fezzi. You know, we were asking Coach Preston before the game, who is she looking for to maybe step it up tonight? And she mentioned Tezzi as one of the girls that she thought, or Fezzi is one of the ones that mm -hmm. she thought could really make a difference. Yeah, they've been playing Jayla Norman over on that side, but she decided to go with Fezzi. Line drive serve. Granado in the middle. Dug up nicely by Francis. Bumped up, rolled over by Schneider. Donato is going to be blocked. Blocked by Fezzi and Henry. And that's going to make Robin Almost Santos burn a timeout. As you see right there, the roof by the Titans. Series record is sponsored by Aston Hotels and Resorts. There you see Hawaii has won all 37 prior meetings and, of course, the sweep down in Southern California on September 29th. 23-22 Hawaii, the Titans will serve. It goes off of Kahakai in the back row. Looked like Savannah wasn't quite sure what she wanted to do. It was definitely an out ball. And, uh, Granado did pour her hands out at the last second. And Costello picks up the ace for 22nd on the year. You'll see a left side. Kelsch is going to be roofed. When was the last time you saw Hawaii get out blocked? Right now, Fulton 4 2 in blocks, doubling up on Hawaii. And it's 24 23 Titans. Big Island Candies, the perfect place to find the perfect gift. Visit them at their flagship store in Hilo, at Ala Moana Center, or BigIslandCandies.com to see their amazing selection. Set point for the Titans, their best server, Savannah Costello, back behind the line. Down the line, the serve goes. Yosia to Granado. Cross court with the help of the net, it trickles down for the kill. Oh, Granado gets a friendly cable. Hitting negative up until that point. Now she's hitting 0-0-0. Zero, zero, zero. Trying to get her hit batting average up. So Granado will serve. Got to get the serve over. She does. Francis up to Bowman. Schneider is going to be blocked. Freed over. Burns. Josia. Castillo gets it to fall in the back row just before the end line. How was that sequence? Well, Hawaii, Hawaii was in control that whole rally, but just couldn't quite put it away until that nice shot by Castillo in the back line. Now it's set number one, set point. And the serve into the twine. Oh, how, how, how volleyball is it? Shifting momentum. Such a cruel sport, isn't it? <laughs> Granado getting six aces last time. That one she can't get game ball over the net. Go Fran figure. Francis the libero will serve. We're going to play extra points here in the first. Gets the serve over. You'll see it in the middle. Burns dug up nicely by Bowman. Schneider kept alive by Yosia. Kahakai on the right side. Kelsch off the double block. Francis there to dig it up. They go left side. Schneider again, and she's roofed. Burns and Kelsch with the big block. It's a pretty good block of Burns at 6'5", Kelsch at 6'1". Putting up a solid four hands across. Hawaii well, second opportunity to close out this first stanza. Kahakai slaps it over. A good high pass. The set in the middle, pushed over. Dug up by Castillo in the middle to Meg. And she powers it down and Hawaii finds a way to survive in this opening set, taking it by the score of 27-25. They lead Cal State Fullerton. One set to none. We'll have the second coming up after this. Let's take a look at some highlights from set number one. We start off with the blocking of the Titans. They really blocked well. They had four blocks on the set. That time of night, Henry, we saw Karen's in one as well, and Schneider. Uh, they normally only have one block a set. They had four there. There comes Hawaii, Natasha Burns lighting up in the middle. And she leads the way for the Wahine with four kills, no errors, and seven tries. 
Magnil also with four kills. No air, so the middle's having some fun out there. Between them, eight kills in 15 tries, hitting well over 500. Newest line of UH apparel and spirit items are now available at the eight zone stores at Ward Center and in the Stan Sheriff Center. All proceeds benefit UH teams and student athletes or shop online at 8zoneonline.com. So we'll see what takes place here in the second set. But that first one was a doozy. Hawaii able to hang on and win at 27 25. There was a tunnel talk, by the way, between sets, but it was a players only tunnel talk, Chris. Interesting. Yeah, I think they you know, just a little, they had to wake themselves up a little bit, but you know, I think you gotta give some credit to Cal State Fullerton. They played some good volleyball. They were four blocks, that's four times the, the normal kind of blocks mm -hmm. they get. And they hit a uh, buck 67, their normal average. And yeah. they only gave up one service ace by Hawaii. They had 16 digs. They only gave up one ace, so a lot of improvement there by Fullerton. You'll see it from the end line up to the front line. Pushed over by Castile, left side, Schneider tips it over. Rata taps around by the Bows. Rolled over, dug up by Schneider. Backs the right side, cross court shot by Karen's dug up. Castile goes cross court, there's Francis. Over on the left side, Schneider off the block, but out of bounds. And the long, long rally goes the way of the time. So I like this orange uniform because well, Halloween's right around the corner, right? There you go. The aunties gave us candy before the match. Yeah. They're in the, the Halloween spirit. Here comes Schneider. She's been pretty good tonight. You'll see a high left side. Castillo off the double block. Pushed up to Bowman on the left side. And there will be a block. Smith getting rooted by Meglio and Kelsch. Now you would expect Hawaii to see their blocking numbers move up as this night progresses. They're the best blocking team in the league. But rarely this year have we seen Hawaii out blocked by the opponent after mm -hmm. the first set. Fullerton did just that, 4-3. Step out, that one is blocked by Magno and Castillo of Karens, right on cue. Now it's 4 all if you're keeping track at home in the block department. You know, uh, Coach, I know you know this, but 23 years ago tonight, the Stan Sheriff Center opened up, hard to believe, 23 years ago, 1994, volleyball, Hawaii against San Jose State. And I know you were here. Yep, I was. Hard to believe it's been that long. Castillo will free it over. Max at right side, the step out block. Nice cover there by Rue. Down the line, dug up by Granado. Left side, Castillo goes cross court. Punched around, up near the net, push, block, saved by the Titans. Schneider will be standing on the three-meter line. That's going to be an easy call for Sid Church. The illegal back row attack. So the Titans are hanging in every rally. They're just managing to get some pretty good digs up. They're attacking the ball well. Not making many unforced errors. Bad pass. Schneider from the back row gets it over. Yosio will dump it with the left hand. Nice cover by Rue. Off the double block, the attack by Nielsen. Back set, right side, step out. Maglio down the line, yes. Now we're gonna get a quick timeout called by Ashley Preston after a close set number one. Hawaii up here early. Let's check out the first Hawaiian Bank top three. It's Big West assist, and there you see Hawaii's Noreen Yosia at 10.21 sits third in the conference in assist per set. 4-1 Hawaii here in set number two. Hawaii hung on, won the opening stanza, 27-25. Kendrick Kels with the serve that goes just long. That has been a part of Hawaii's game that they need to work on. They had 17 service errors last Saturday against Northridge, a dozen last night against Riverside. On the other hand, I think they're also creating a lot of difficult situations for the other team's passers by serving so aggressively. 
I think this team needs to do that, don't you? I think that's going to be part of the success is going to be sometimes you're going to hit them into the net and long, and sometimes you're going to get points. You, you got to you got to pick your poison. Exactly. You just uh, but I think they need to continue to serve aggressively. Casey Castillo, five serving two. Castillo down the right side. Bowman will bump it up behind the three meter line. Two hand over by Schneider. Mags digs it up. Left side. Granado down the line. Caught soup. That's the biggest hit of the night by either team. As Granado went up and put that one down easily for the point. But Emily Maglio sure does draw a lot of attention, doesn't she? And that was such a smart decision by Yosia recognizing that and going over to Granado, who was on the left side. Yeah, Mackenzie exactly. Abelman now in, a freshman out of Vegas. Pretty good rotation for Hawaii, where they've got Granado and Maglio in the front row at the same time. Set left side, dug up over pass. And uh, Abelman now will come in and run the offense. So a setting change for the Titans. See Megan Carlson in there as well. Sophomore out of Reno. Uh -huh, Kai, good pass up to Yosea. In the middle, Mags off the palms of Schneider. I'll tell you, one of the things that's tough to, to, uh, to defend with Magno is that she has such range. She has a wide fan. She can hit it back to her left. She can hit it right. She can go over the top. Just, just tough to really get a really good beat on where she's going to hit it all the time. Granasso, Abelman right side, not ready for it as Carlson. Carlson will be called for the double contact. So this second set is starting to look like more of what we anticipated coming into tonight as why now their largest lead of five in this stanza. Granasso ready again from the left side, goes down the line past Shankovic. Abelman bumps it up to attack and it goes off the diving hands in the back row of McKenna Ross. Carlson with the kill. Great swing by Carlson there. Last year, she was number one in kill percentage at 285 for the team this year. A couple kills a game, but she's only hitting a buck 30 this year, so a little bit off on her kill percentage. That one there was like an all Big West swing. Cross court serve, handled by Granado, back to McKenna. Block pushed over by Burns. Abelman goes back, set right side, cross court, and we get a net violation on Hoy. Hoy calls for the net. And, and McKenna, a three points. McKenna Granado got a little bit too aggressive on that. At the net, got her forearms on the cable. Is it just me, or have we seen that call a lot this year? Seems like more often than not. Granado this time down the line, but why? And Granado getting into a bit of a funk now. She hitting below zero or right around zero. 3 0 run now by the Titans. Costello serves that one way out of bounds. Oh, I won the first set 27 25. Now, of course, everybody's thinking about next weekend and the road trip. And Hawaii versus Cal Poly, and they also take on UC Santa Barbara, but got to take care of business here first. Abelman backpedal sets the left side. Schneider dug up by Kahakai. Left side, Granado off the double block, and finally hits the terraplex. Savannah had a little more oomph on that one. I don't think she was happy that she hit that last ball out, and she's hitting around zero right now. Uncharacteristic for her to hit a low number like that. You'll see a team leader in service aces. Flips the tape. Abelman backs us to far right side, going cross court and missing is Fezzi. We talked about at one time in that first set, the Titans were hitting, oh, 100, 100 something points above their average. They're about, what, about 160, 180, somewhere around there, their, their season average. Exactly. They were hitting like 260, 280 mm -hmm. in most of the first set. We'll see again with the jump serve cranks that one over. Nice job. 
by Francis. And that one will be hit way out of bounds again by Fezzi. The timing may not quite be there. Abelman, the freshman setter, and Fezzi and her may have not worked a lot together, and she'll be called to the bench. And Jalen Norman, a freshman out of Amarillo, Texas, will take her spot. And now we're beginning to see the youngsters out on the floor for Ashley Preston. Abelman, left side, Schneider, nice dig in the back row by Ross. They go on the left side for Granado, off the block, and it goes out of bounds. And Ashley Preston's gonna call a timeout. Hawaii, with a little separation now, up 13 to six. Let's check out how it works, presented by Central Pacific Bank, Coach. Well, let's take a look at these two blockers here for Fullerton, how much attention they pay to Emily Maglio. They're both gonna go out here to the left and watch this as we roll it. Maglio's gonna take two blockers with her, leaving McKenna Granada with one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. And she just has a field day out there. And there is an ace for Noreen Yosia, number 31 on the year, and only the second ace of the night for Hawaii, UH on a 7-0 scoring run. 6-0 scoring run. And Fullerton out of timeouts for this set. You'll see again, rips that one. Abelman has to back up, sets the right side, and trying to tool it off the block and successfully doing it is Norman. Freshman out of Amarillo. I mean, we have a challenge here. Players turned around and told Robin Amos Santos, Coach, grab the green card. That ball was in. And she is. You see the big grin. And then, and then, the then Robin turned to the team and said, this, you guys better be right. I don't want to waste one of these green cards. If you're plus, wrong. She, plus, she doesn't want to waste her momentum either. This slows everything down. So she's saying this better be worth getting the point, and we'll see. Well, there's a little pride involved as well because Ashley Preston is two for two on calls using the yellow or the green card. There you go. Let's see how, where this ball lands. I thought it landed on the line. Oh, clearly. What do you think? Uh, it looks like it. Maybe it's, that's, that's tough to see. Maybe there's another angle. But it looks like it from there, yeah. Now you can see Natasha Burns in the background pointing and, and saying, look at that, it landed on the line. Now, let's see if we get a better look here. Oh, yeah. Oh, Ooh, that might be out. It could be the shadow that was on the line. Well, so far, I think that second that second replay showed the best look. And that one that one's difficult to see. The other the other replay, I think uh, this one right here, I think shows it better. It looks to me like that ball is out. So you're saying out? Yep. Just for fun, I'll say it's in. Okay. And one of us will be right, and you, one of us will be wrong. You wash my car if I. I'm right, I wash your car. <laughs> right. Well, we do that in the corner. That's what you do in the, the corner, right? Yeah. yeah. I think Lisa's a little couple car washes, and then Ryan, of course, goes off to Seattle, goes out of, out of town, and so Dave showed me filling in. Let's see if maybe we can tell from this angle. That's really close. Yeah. I think you might, I, think I might I, be washing your car. I think the ball's out. Denise Hansen looking at her. I don't think she can really tell either. She's trying. Now the Jeopardy music comes on in the arena. Well, we're about ready to find out. We're about ready to find out. What is she gonna say? Ah, she's gonna say it did land on the line. So it'll go down as a block and a challenge win for Robin Amo Santos. Her coaching staff will bump knuckles with her. So both coaches so far unbeaten in challenges. <laughs> And Hawaii's opened up their largest lead of nine, 15-6 here in the second. You'll see us still serving for Hawaii. A high pass up to Edelman. And that one missed hit by Norman. You know, when Norman was a senior in high school, she was a top 30 pick in basketball. Quite an athlete, also a triple jumper, long jumper. Quite the athlete. You'll see her. Abelman at the three meter sign. Left side, Schneider way long and wide. 
If anyone's no. going to get him out of the funk, it's going to be it's going to be Schneider because she's got the, the heavy arm. She gets the most points for them historically, but right now struggling. Hawaii knows the ball is going out to her, so they're putting two blockers out on her. Schneider's going to have to battle to get the side out. You'll see him moves positions, but goes cross court. It's going to be an overpass and taking advantage, Granada. Now let's take a look at our cool play. Here it comes, brought to you by Fujitsu Air Conditioning. Granado crushes the coconut. Why not? Fujitsu Air Conditioning, cool play. Abelman, back set, right side. Norman off the double block, dug up by Ross. Bumped up near the net on the left side. Granado cross court. Abelman, who's gonna do it? They're gonna bump it over, that's Costello. UH with a chance in the middle is a low set. No chance for Burns right there. I don't think that set got above the net. One thing you don't want to do is you don't want to underset someone who's 6'5". Because if you overset them, it's in the air a long time and the left side hitter can go cover it. But when you underset them, it's a tough play. Bumped up from the knees by Yosia Kelch will be blocked. Roofed by Karens and Norman. It's a solid block by Karens and Norman. Nowhere to go for, for Kelsch except higher hands. Somehow punched over by Yosia. Abelman, left side, Schneider, she stopped. And then coming down momentarily and grabbing her ankle or her knee was Natasha Burns kind of scared us for a second, but she said, I'm okay, I'm okay. Now you mentioned Jalen Norman, an outstanding basketball player in high school as well. I wonder if we'll see her on the court with the tiny women's basketball team. Good question. I would, if she's on the campus and I'm the basketball coach, I'd be, <laughs> I'll be talking to her. <laughs> Absolutely. Back side, right side. Norman gets it off the block and down, off the hands of Castillo. And we do want to give a shout out to the athletics director at Cal State Fullerton, Jim Donovan. Many had many good years here. Absolutely. As athletic director and as a football player. And as the manager of Rainbow Stadium, which is now Les Murakami Stadium. There you go. Or many hats. Good job by Kelsch, and now the back row, getting it to roll over the tape and down is Granada. That's when you know things are going your way. Yeah, when you, when you shank a ball, and you, end up, and you end up getting a bump set, and then a kill with help from the cable. There's nothing They're obviously the, living right. Yeah, I, much different than that opening set, that's for sure. Hawaii won it, but 27-25 the score. Schneider rejected, saved by the Titans to go back to her on the left side, pushed down the left line, and gets it off the diving Granado. Smart play that time by Schneider, realizing the block was there. Might as well push it down into the back row. Schneider had, you know, she started off at the University of Baltimore County. Have you heard of them? I have. You have? Oh, yeah. I've never heard of that school. I always knew him as University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Maybe they couldn't fit it all in in the last school, but they're a pretty decent basketball program, actually. Left side pushed over by Carlson. Pipe set, Granado dug up by Francis. There's Schneider off the tape. Mags with the dig. Right side, Kels down the line, but why? You know, up 20 to 11, this is one of those times where I think Hawaii could tinker a bit with some different play sets, moving players around. You know, again, maybe moving Maglio to the outside, just doing something different. Schneider right down the middle, bumped up for Castile. Dug up by Francis, chased down by Abelman. Carlson gets it over. UH in the middle, Mags off the double block, then off the hands of Schneider and out of bounds. And that was something different right there. There was a second tempo set, not a first tempo set that's quick, a second tempo set that's a little bit higher. It's in the air longer. Uh, I like that. Something, something unique there that's going to maybe help Hawaii down the road to show some diversity in their offensive attack. And then coming, coming in now to serve Faith Ma'afala, the backup setter out of Kapole. All Hawaii. 
here in the second set. Trying to take a 2-0 lead. Mafala serve a good one. Abelman far left side, empowering it through the block, but somehow kept alive by UH. Incredibly, they get it over. They go back on the left side. Carlson down the line, dug up by Maafala. Kahakai, Castillo. There's Francis to save it. Bumped up again. Cross court, Kahakai, Yosia, back set, step out, off the block by Meglio. I'll tell you, there's a great dig by Kahakai, but earlier, Maafala had two great digs. And here's the uh, end of the play with the slide maneuver. But before that, I'll tell you, Megan Carlson mm -hmm. took a couple of great swings. Looks like they were gonna go down. They go to Carlson, Carlson dug up by Kahakai, up near the net, Jowson, who wins the joust? Who else? Marine, Joust, Yosia. That's three swings in a row that Carlson took that should have gone down, I thought. Hawaii just playing some pretty good defense right now. Three in a row for Hawaii now, 23-11 they lead. And Maafala to serve. Flat-footed, Lolly pops it over, Shank. Abelman bumps it up, Schneider behind the three-meter line, dug up by Maafala. Yosia, left side, Castillo, cross court, yes. And it's set point, Hawaii. Boy, on a four-point run again, Maafala just seems to come in and serve the ball well. She did it at Northridge last weekend, mm -hmm. especially in that fifth set. Just a money player from Kamehameha Kapalama. And she just has a great energy about her. Line drives it, just gets it over, over pass, ball game. Meglio goes up, puts it down, and Hawaii easily wins the second set by the score of 25 to 11. They lead two sets to none. When we come back, we'll head over to the corner crew and get some highlights from the first two. And welcome back. Time now to take a look at the McDonald's match stats. Well, immediately you take a look at the kill percentage, 275 to 025. Fullerton was hitting really well in that first set. That's why that first set was so close. They were hitting about 100 points above their normal season average. Second set, though, negative 032. They came back to earth a little bit in Hawaii uh, with seven blocks to five. Finally, finally Hawaii regained their presence at the net and got those seven blocks to five playing much, much better. So we're back to live action starting the third set. Hines will push it over, dug up by Granado, set left side for Castillo off the double block. How much do you think that first set took the wind out of the sails of Fullerton? Well, they, they spent a lot of energy. I think they're really adrenalized by this crowd. You know, they don't play in front of a crowd. In fact, this crowd prob probably is a total of their season total all year for attendance. Yeah, I think their season total is about a couple thousand, like 2,300. Is it? Yeah. yeah, this is well above that. Megs off the step out, carries beyond the end line, and Hawaii out to a quick 2-0 lead here in the third. The Titans are going to go with the freshman setter, Mackenzie Abelman, the freshman out of Las Vegas and Durango High School, which happens to be the high school of Ashley Preston. Once again, Maglio and that step out maneuver is so difficult to stop that. Anyway, back to talking about Fulton, how they, how well they played that first set. I, I really think they were adrenalized by the massiveness of this crowd, the energy in this room, and uh, they certainly played so well. It wasn't the, that the Hawaii played poorly. It was really, I think, more that Cal State Fulton really played well, even out blocking Hawaii in that first set. No, I absolutely agree. And you know, as you and I were talking off camera, they're athletes and they're competitors, and I'm sure they were embarrassed by what took place at Fullerton the first time. Oh, the back row, the D set to Kel. Ooh, new little wrinkle. We talked about wrinkles. Dave Shoji and Lisa Strandma talking about it in the corner set, and the side set uh, between sets two and three, and there it was, a new little wrinkle. That was commonplace a year ago with Nikki Taylor, but don't see it too much now. So the question is, will we see Maglio go to the back row and do some of that? Abelman goes over on the left side. It's going to be one hand blocked by Yosia. Carlson tries to get it over. She can't. But it will be four hits on the Titans. I like what Ashley Preston's doing, giving a lot of the youngsters a chance to play, give them the opportunity. She realizes that 
This is probably not a match they're gonna win, but this will pay dividends down the line for these youngsters. That one just kind of missed it. I don't think it got above the net. And she's kind of mixed it up with her recruiting when she took over some transfers, some junior college kids, and then trying to find the right fit with the, the freshman out of high school. And she, she did say that there will be a lot of youngsters on the court at various times, like an abnormal amount of youngsters on the court. Serve goes long, Castillo didn't. Look at that smirk on her face. She didn't like it. She's looking over at Robin like, do you, do you want to use the green card? Let's take a look. Was it in? That oh, was, that was in. in. I don't blame her. She got robbed of a uh, service ace. Back set, right side, step out and crutching the coconut is Maglia. Who I would be shocked if she's not the offensive player of the week in the Big West. Can't imagine anybody else having a better weekend. Yeah, I would I would I would agree. i uh, she's putting up some amazing numbers. Gianna Gonasso, the senior out of Huntington Beach, will serve for Hawaii. Six-two bows. Hawaii won the first two, 27-25 and 25-11. And also flirts it over the pass high up to Abel Mingo's left side. Hesitating initially was the attacker, Granado off the double block. Nice little bump set by Natasha Burns there. Burns getting the bump set assist. And with that kill, timeout on the floor called by the Titans. Let's go inside the numbers presented by Heineken. 45 blocks for Emily Maglio in her last five matches. How many uh, does Mags have so far tonight? She has five to go along with 11 kills, hitting 688. And she's ranked number 10 in the entire NC2A in blocks per set. And there's a the ball hit off the block by Nielsen. Point for Cal State Fullerton. Aha, uh aha, -huh. uh -huh. new wrinkle. Maglio, oh, I thought she was gonna stay in the back row. It's gonna be just Kelsch. Maybe Robin's holding that till next Friday. Maybe, maybe. So it looked like it might have gone out. Back to the right side, and on the step out, Burns is blocked. Back for Ross, rolls into the back row, dug up by Francis, Abelman, Fezzi cross court, Kelsch. Yosia up in the air, Granado off the hands of the libero Francis, and it flies out of bounds. Lieutenant Granado starting to warm up now after hitting pretty level 0, zero, zero most of the night. Now she has, she's up to 10 kills, four errors, hitting 250. Good comeback by McKenna. Dashie and Gran uh, Maglio, the only two in double digits. Maglio with 11, Granado with 10. Nobody on the Fullerton side with more than nine, that Schneider the serve into the twine by Yosia. Schneider leading the way though with total kills for Fortune with nine. But only hitting 062. Yeah. Ouch. Costello will come in to serve the team leader in aces. Yosia bumps it up left side and using the block to her advantage is McKenna Granado. And she is warming up, you're absolutely right. But everybody kind of struggled in that first set. And you mentioned you got to give credit to the Titans. Great bump set that time by Noreen Yosia. She's getting better and better at that. Granada over on the far left side, walks up. Line drives that one into the net. Granada's second service there, Hawaii's seventh on the night. One of the things the Titans should be proud of is the fact that they've only given up two service aces tonight after giving up 17 in the first meeting. There's a nice little roll shot. Nice dig by Schneider. Fezzi dug up by Kahakai. You'll see a back says the far right side. Kelsch will be roofed by Schneider. We're gonna give credit to the Titans. They're putting up a pretty darn good block tonight, going block for block with Hawaii. That one there, mostly Karens, I think. 
even though they're four and 17, they've only been swept. There's another block, but covered by UH, left side. Castillo goes cross court and finds the Puka between two Titans. They've only been swept seven times this year coming into tonight. For a team that's four and 17, that shows that they are pretty feisty. They play hard, they're giving effort. I remember you asked Coach Preston before the game, you were asking, you know, this is this 4 and 17 record really indicative of how good your team is? And she was pretty quick to say, no, we're, we're better than that. We've been playing some pretty good volleyball. Off the double block, same back row, Francis bumped up left side and missed timing it and hitting it into the net. There's Schneider. That's a tough play. When that ball's coming up like that and trying to time it. Five point lead for UH, Savannah Kahakai. Francis up to Abelman, left side, Schneider, cross court, misses everything. And this is kind of what you see happening. We saw it in the second set, where the Titans will start making mistakes, and they have, and so Ashley Preston wants to talk things over. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss the best hour of sports talk on television, but seriously, inside access every Monday on Spectrum Sports. Look at those guys. That truly is a motley crew, isn't it? And they are a lot of fun. <laughs> They're having fun here at the arena. Hawaii leads 12-6, set number three. Fezzi cross court, dug up by Yosia. Kahakai with the bump set, out of the back row, Granada. Bumped over left side, Schneider in the back row, two hand save, Kahakai. Castillo dug up nicely by Costello, pushed into the back row, but there's Granado. Up to Yosia, in the middle for Megs, off the double block. Save, right side, Fezzi rolls it, rejected. They go back set, right side, Fezzi takes a swing in it and powers it through the double block. Gotta give Fezzi a lot of credit for that one. And she struggled in that second set, but she's come back nicely here in the third. You know, we, we, we can't ignore the two liberos, by the way. They're, they're really playing well, getting, getting well above their normal average for digs per set. Kai with 16 digs and Kitty Francis with 15. Fezzi off the double block, saved by Meglio. Pipe set, Renamo rolls it over, there's Costello. Thrown over on the left side, pushed down the line. Kahakai, back set, left side, Castello down the line, and finally off the hands of Fezzi as the line drives into the net. You know, one thing I've been thinking about watching the Big West this year, Chris, is every team, it seems like, has a terrific libero. Whoever's named the first team Big West libero has got to be one of the best in the country, I would think. Yeah, they're, the numbers they're putting up are pretty amazing. And Faith Maafala will come in to serve for the Bows. There you get a good look at number 12. Started her college career at Southern Utah. And she serves it wide and out of bounds. Got the attendance numbers for this evening. Tickets issued 7,218. In-house, 5,329. A good Saturday night, Saturday night crowd for Hawaii and Cal State Fullerton. Garcia in the middle, and that's an easy kill for Granada, for a Megley. You know, it all started with Granado's pass, which was picture perfect, and it ended with Maglo hitting, I think, one of her favorite sets, which is that tight slide. Even though two blockers were up on her, they were committing on her, they knew the ball was going to her, they still couldn't get there. They needed a ladder to get to her. She went OTT over the top on both blockers. I like that. I hear you and Kanoa mention it. I like that OTT. Step out, blocked, bumped up. Nielsen's blocked, covered by the Titans. They go back on the left side. Cross court, shot goes long. By the way, after tonight, only two more home matches remaining for the Bows after their next road trip. But this is your final night of Rainbow Waikine Volleyball. Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna have to miss the next two, but uh, I'll be there in spirit. <laughs> and you'll be back for the men's season. Yeah. In January. Coming up late, Schneider just rolls it off the tape. Kahakai bumps it left side. Granado down the line. Yes! Well, that was hit with an awful lot of authority and great bump set by Savannah Kahakai again. Terrific 
Hitting it outside the double block, trying to take away the cross court shot. Castillo goes cross court with her serve up to Abelman. Dumps it over, one hand dig, over pass, pushed over, saved by Mags. High left side, Granado, this time she hits it a little bit too far. You can read her lips, she says, what? Let's see. Oh, God, Kai in this save, she comes out of nowhere. Keep that ball alive. Just a fearless competitor, so competitive. Hawaii won the first set, 27-25, set number two. 25-11, saving it as you'll see a Kahakai two hands it over. Here come the Titans, high left side, Nielsen dug up by Maafala, high left side for Granado, cross court. And the line, the, uh, line judge is gonna be overruled by Sid Church up on the pedestal. Yeah, I like that when the, when the head referee follows the ball so carefully they can make a line call and not need lines people to help them. And he, he was right, he was line, in. And you could tell the lines, he could also tell that the lines person was backing away and getting away from the ball, may not have had great eye contact when the ball landed. I think you're absolutely right. Buenasso serves. Dumped over by Abelman and it works. Nice job by the freshman. Two handing it over. Nobody for UH ready to pick that up. That will drive Robin Amo Santos crazy. Yeah. Hawaii up by a touchdown, 17-10. And Mackenzie Abelman will serve. A couple of feet back on the right side. Pops that one deep and it goes long. We're gonna get a substitution and coming in for the first time, I believe this weekend, Sophia Howling. We didn't, I, did we see her last night? I don't remember seeing her last night. I think Burns played the whole night mm -hmm. last night. So Howling's gonna come in for, uh, for UH. And you'll see how will serve. Rips that one into the tape. Costello now will come in and serve for Cal State Fullerton. I still with a comfortable lead, 11 serving 18. Renato, Yosia, back to McKenna, left side, down the line, off the hands of Abelman and out of bounds. Renato, now up to 13 kills, make it 14 kills on the night, hitting 290. Hawaii's now got a huge block up front. Howling's in there at 6'2", Burns at 6'5", Castillo at 6'3". So Howling's gonna play on the right side, put up a big block. Well, the block didn't help there. Schneider terminated that one easily cross court. Great swing by Madeline Schneider, the one who leads them in kills, kills percent, points. Their go to gal. And you know, Ashley Preston said, we've got a good outside hitter in Schneider, but we're probably short. We need one more terminator, outside hitter, if you will. I think a lot of coaches probably think the same thing, right? And the second biggest point getter probably should be an outside hitter. Instead, it's Summer Karens with 174 points. And a block and a half per set. John Kai with a good serve. Abelman back set right side. Fezzi cross court knocks it down. So Hawaii would be comfortable now just trading side outs. Yeah, this is an interesting look here. I think, I think the reason that, uh, that Howling is in is she's blocking on the right side, so she'd be going up against Cal Poly's biggest attackers on that right, so it'll be interesting to see Howling attacks on the right works. side. It's blocked back to Howling. Goes cross court, yes! I like the fact you'll see it went back to her a second time after being blocked. Yeah, showing a lot of confidence in here, and Howling was ready. She got up and took a good swing at it. Pretty fired up right there. So this is some tinkering and I think is important for Hawaii to do to throw something different at the Cal Poly Mustangs next week. So Faith Ma'afalo has been pretty good from behind the service line. Serves that one deep up to Abelman, backs it right side. Step out is good. Now be blocked by Castillo and Maglio of Garrett. For Hawaii, that is block number nine. 
couple 6-3 Giants out there. I think Giants is absolutely the, right. The two of them really block well together. Rarely do you see a split block with those two. Crossport rainbow serve. Set on the left side, Schneider gets it off the block and down. Schneider now with her 11th kill on the night. Isn't Schneider, she's listed as a junior, but she's gonna be playing her last year. This year she wants to go on and play beach. Step out. Actually, no, that's Fayad. Oh, uh, Fayad, yeah, we haven't seen her. Megla with her 14th kill. Just so deadly on that step out. Only two points away from the sweep. Casey Castile. The serve. Abelman, left side. Off the double lock. Nice save by Kahakai in the middle for Megs. Dug up by Francis. They go on the left side. Tipped over the block. Ratatats around. Ma'afala. Castile behind the three meter line. Francis. Abelman in the middle. Saved by Ma'afala. Bumped up Kahakai. Rolled over by Granada. One hand dig. Popped around. And then swung over. Dug up by Ma'afala. Left side. Granado and Granado crushes the coconut and the fans rise to their feet as it's Aloha Ball Hawaii. Pretty good rally there. Both teams playing some pretty good defense, especially Faith Mahafala. And guess who we're going to see? Rika Okino, the redshirt freshman out of Kalani High School. We saw her a bit in the non conference season. I don't think we've seen her at all in conference play. Not yet. Well, we four have now. four times an all OIA player. And the valedictorian, I believe, of Kalani High School. Serve will be an ace off the hands of Rue and Okino. And the Rainbow Wahine do it. They win it tonight in three over Cal State Fullerton 27 25, 25 11 and 25 to 14 as the Rainbow Wahine improved to 15 and six on the year, nine and one in conference play. Cal State Fullerton drops to four and 18 and 0 and nine in the Big West Conference. So Hawaii, after a rocky start in that first set, really settled down, started playing Rainbow Wahine volleyball and got the job done. And now everybody can kind of exhale and look forward to the matchup next Friday on the mainland against Cal Poly, which will more than likely, or at least a good chance, that it will decide who wins the regular season and the automatic bid. Exactly, and that's gonna be a barn burner. And uh, Tiff Wells tells me that he has on good authority that that place at Cal Poly, that gym, will be packed full. It will sell out, maybe for the first time in history. Yeah, I would imagine it would. But let's now go over to Dash and Coach Robin, the happy coach. All right, Scotty, thank you very much. Here with head coach Robin Amos Santos. I guess if you could kind of drop the blueprint for the weekend, it would be sweep, sweep. At least you got that. A win is a win. I'm always happy with a win, but um, you know, I don't know how much practice we're gonna we're gonna use. Two hours of serving. I don't know what it's gonna do. You know, I don't know. They serve. They started serving good in um, pregame. I just told them to carry it out here, but I don't know. Maybe they just get nervous. Well, 17 service aces last time you played. You knew you weren't gonna match that probably. Let's fast forward to next week. I'm sure you didn't want to talk about Cal Poly before this weekend. Now we can talk about it. Obviously, this is the biggest match of the season coming up next week on the mainland. Yeah, I mean, for them, hopefully it's a revenge match. You know, we're up 2-0 and, you know, going down in five, you know, it's a heartbreaker for them. So hopefully they'll come out and they're going to want it, you know, want it more. It's a small arena there, but it's going to be a packed house. So it's going to feel big. Uh, is that something that your team will thrive on? I mean, I hope that's what I would thrive on if I was a player, you know. And um, I was, I was thinking about asking Madeline, hey, can we, can we pay for a bus and people can um, bus up there, or you know, they fly up there and we can bus them over. I don't know, get some crowd up in there. But I think they'll, I think they'll come together and play. We'll have to put a call out for the local people. Finally, a little bit of balance tonight between: Do you want to experiment? Are you afraid to give things away, or do you want to give Cal Poly a little bit of something to have to think about? 
uh, you know, we'll come up straight, you know, straight up with it. But we have a couple things going on. We still have to work on um, some stuff on that. But, you know, hopefully we can just come out. And, we, oh. you know, we were up to old with them. It's just lack of focus, you know, in the mental part of their game. So hopefully they can come back with that. Lock it in. Bring home a W. Have a great weekend on the road. Thank Coach, you. thank you very much. <laughs> Chris, Scotty, back to you guys. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Time now to check out the players of the match brought to you by Bank of Hawaii. And there you see Katie Francis, 17 digs. The libero with a service ace. And Savannah Kahakai, 19 digs and three assists. So the liberos, and you pointed that out during the match, that both liberos were having terrific matches. Yeah, they really played well. You divide by three, that's, uh, you know, for Kahakai, it's almost five, uh, six digs per set. She normally averages, you know, around four. So good production by her and Francis. Same thing. She upped her production, and uh, they both I thought, really played well. Not only in the digging department, but they also passed and stabilized the passing pattern very well as well. So Hawaii did what they needed to do this weekend against the bottom of two teams, and that was win and get sweeps. And as you heard Dash talking to the coach, all eyes will be on San Luis Obispo Friday night, Hawaii Cal Poly. All of us remember Hawaii up 2-0 a couple of weeks ago playing very well and then here came the Mustangs. What does Hawaii need to do to make sure that they can come away with a win? Do something maybe differently than what we saw the first meeting? Well, I think one of the things they need to do is repeat the offensive performance they had tonight. Tonight they hit 324. Normally they hit you know, around 250. So if they can go 75 points higher in their offensive productivity and their kill percentage, that will go a long ways toward winning that match. But the second thing they'll have to do is they're going to have to really keep their cool against that probably hostile student, mostly student crowd. And uh, I think that'll be important. And I think if they can remember what they did the first two sets and they played them here and they went up 2-0, and I think that'll be important. And finally, I think they really need to come up with a few wrinkles, throw something different at Cal Poly. By the way, Mott Gymnasium. Yeah. It's not an arena. It is truly a, gym. a gymnasium. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And it feels like it is up there. It should be a lot of fun. And hopefully the Rainbow Wahine can come back with a couple of wins on the road. Well, Chris, this is your final broadcast. Look forward to seeing you when you get back. And uh, with men's volleyball, it's been fun. Sounds great. Thanks, right. Scotty. Special thanks to our entire Spectrum Sports crew. They always do. A great job. From my broadcast partner, Chris McLaughlin, I'm Scott Robs. Until next time, we bid you an aloha and a good evening from the Stan Sheriff Center in Manoa.